Chihiro Furuya is a first-year student at Shiu High School, and he's obsessed with everything related to zombies. He collects all kinds of zombie-related items from DVDs and dolls to designs, video games, and more. What's even crazier is that he dreams of meeting a super cute zombie girl, and he even wants to fall in love with one. Chihiro shares this zombie girl obsession with his two close friends, Yasutaka and Emoji. Naturally, Yasutaka thinks Chihiro's wish is strange, but Chihiro doesn't care because it's been his dream for a long time. Yasutaka is curious about what exactly makes Chihiro so attracted to cute zombie girls. Chihiro simply replies that it brings joy to his heart. Moji suggests that maybe Chihiro feels sympathy for those who have died and come back to life. However, Yasutaka disagrees with Moji's reasoning. The truth is, even Chihiro doesn't really know what drives his obsession with zombie girls. The Furuya family has a long history of maintaining the Shiryu Temple. Chihiro lives with his family at the temple. His grandfather, Jagru Furuya, seems a bit senile while his father, Duwon Furuya, serves as the head priest at the temple. His younger sister, Mero Furuya, is a 12-year-old girl. Every day, Chihiro's father handles breakfast while Mero takes care of the other household chores. During meal times, Jaguru repeatedly tells Mero to stop putting Napa cabbage in the miso soup and Mero always replies that it's just regular cabbage. That's just how Jaguru is and the whole family is used to it because of his age. Another member of their family is Babu, a stray cat that used to roam around the temple until they adopted him. Chihiro's mother passed away when he was young and he doesn't even remember her anymore. Even so, Chihiro feels their family is incredibly happy and he's grateful that he's never felt lonely. One day, their family suffered a loss. Babu was hit by a car driven by their neighbor, and Chihiro witnessed it. The neighbor, an elderly man Chihiro had known since childhood, explained that Babu had suddenly appeared when his car was passing by, and he couldn't stop in time. Chihiro was heartbroken, unable to think or do anything. Duan said they couldn't bury animals at the temple because the followers would strongly oppose it, so he apologized to Chihiro and Mero for only being able to bury Babu behind their house. Mero asked her older brother if, as children of the temple, they should be able to control their emotions during times like this. Shigeru responded, saying that wasn't true. Mero then approached her brother, and they hugged and cried together over Babu's grave. That night, Shigeru couldn't sleep. He was overwhelmed by thoughts of why death had to happen so suddenly, causing such deep sadness. He even began to think that no one should ever have to die. Suddenly, he had a wild idea. He looked for a book stored in his cabinet, one that he got last year while helping his relatives in the Tohoku region sort through old documents that were to be donated to the local archives. The book seemed like an ordinary notebook and no one even knew when it had been written. The office considered it useless but not Chihiro. Inside, it detailed a spell that could supposedly bring the dead back to life. It might have been nonsense, but Chihiro thought there was no harm in trying. He decided to resurrect Babu using the magic from the book. He dug up Babu's grave and placed the body in an empty ice cream container before taking it to an abandoned building. Shigeru figured no one would come there, allowing him to perform the ritual without interruption. He entered the building and went up to the upper floors. Shigeru loved zombies, so he would continue to cherish Babu even if he came back as a zombie. On the second day of preparing the magic potion, Shigeru noticed a girl approaching the well near the abandoned building. Not long after, she screamed into the old well. The next morning, Shihiro took ice blocks from the fridge and put them into a bucket when Mero came up to him, startling him. Mero asked what Shihiro was doing, but Shihiro said he wasn't doing anything. His younger sister didn't believe him, feeling like he was lying, especially with his suspicious behavior. Still, Shihiro ignored her and left with the ice blocks. He placed the ice blocks into a cooler that held Babu's body, neatly stored in his bedroom closet. Shihiro headed to school with Yasutaka and Moji. Yasutaka felt like Chihiro wasn't paying attention to his story, but Chihiro assured him that he was. Yasutaka didn't believe him and asked for Chihiro's opinion. Chihiro was confused about what opinion he was talking about, proving that he hadn't been listening at all. Yasutaka ended up repeating his story, talking about the girls at Senka High School and their classmates. Senka High was known for having the prettiest girls in the area, while Shiu High School was an all-boys school and was boring in comparison. Yasutaka regretted that the students of Senka High always took a different route to school. In fact, the buildings of Shiu High and Senka High were located across from each other, separated by a river. Yasutaka had purposely applied to Shiu High because it was near Senka High, hoping to meet and get to know one of the rich girls from Senka. He also mentioned that a very wealthy girl had started at Senka High this year. Yasutaka was thrilled when he pointed out which girl he meant. 
The girl with long black hair on the other side of the river was the daughter of Sanka High's principal. Her name was Sanka Rea. Yastataka was completely captivated by Rei's beauty and said that because she came from such a high-class family, she was surely an innocent and pure girl. But Chihiro disagreed, saying that not everything was always as it seemed. This irritated Yasutaka, who felt like Chihiro was acting like a know-it-all. Later that day, Chihiro's cousin, Saji Ranko, came to his house to deliver some food. Dune greeted her and mentioned that Mero would be home late today, so he thanked Ranko for bringing the food. Ranko asked where Chihiro was. Dune said Chihiro was in his room, mentioning that since Babu's death, Chihiro always seemed tired and went straight to bed after school. Ranko went into Chihiro's room and woke him up, returning a zombie DVD she had borrowed from him earlier. Chihiro had completely forgotten that he had lent her the DVD. Ranko was surprised, especially since Chihiro had promised to come over to her house to retrieve it. Chihiro explained that he had been a bit busy. But Ranko wasn't convinced and started pulling his hair in frustration. She stopped when Chihiro suddenly asked if she knew Sanka Rea, a first-year student at Sanka High, since Ranko attended the same school. Ranko said she knew her, and Chihiro asked what kind of girl Rea was. Ranko only knew Rea as the principal's daughter and teased Chihiro, wondering if he liked her. She tugged on his hair again and Chihiro, in pain, quickly denied liking Rea, saying that Yasutaka was the one interested in her. Continuing to mess with him, Ranko was annoyed because she thought Chihiro had been upset about Babu's death, but it seemed like he was doing just fine. Chihiro, still in pain, pleaded with Ranko to stop. She threw him onto the bed, said goodbye, and reminded him to come to her house next week. Ranko borrowed another zombie DVD and left. Saji Ranko was Chihiro's cousin. Her parents ran a traditional Japanese restaurant, and she was a second-year student at Senga High School. Even though she was only about half a year older than Chihiro, Ranko always acted like his big sister. On the second night of Chihiro's magic experiment, he began preparing the tools and ingredients needed to make the potion as described in the book. However, one of the pages was unreadable because it was stained. The page seemed to indicate that the necessary ingredient was some type of poisonous plant, but he couldn't figure out which one. Previously, Chihiro had tried using poisonous water hemlock leaves, but it didn't work. He was feeling pessimistic about his efforts, but decided to keep trying for a week. If there were no results by then, he would have no choice but to bury Babu again. Suddenly, he heard footsteps outside the building, so he went to check. It turned out to be Rea, who was heading toward the well near the building. Once she reached it, Rea screamed loudly into the old well, just like she had the night before, pouring out all her frustrations. Rea cried out, wondering why she had to be born into the Sanka family. She just wanted freedom to come and go as she pleased with her friends. But because she was part of the Sanka family, she was never allowed to. Chikara watched from the window above, sipping from a bottle of water. He was shocked when Rea shouted that she wanted her father to stop taking naked pictures of her on her birthday to record her growth. Startled, Chihiro accidentally dropped his drink, which caught Rea off guard. Chihiro tried to hide below the window, but Rea had already seen him. They awkwardly met, and Chihiro felt really uncomfortable around Rea. He tried to start a conversation, but suddenly, Rea begged him to forget everything he had just seen and not tell anyone, saying she'd do anything he asked. Casually, Chihiro joked that he might spread what he had heard yesterday. Rea was mortified to hear that Chihiro had actually been listening since the night before. She thought maybe it would be better if he hadn't said anything. Now she felt so embarrassed that dying seemed preferable to living. She wished she could die and be reborn as someone else. Chihiro was surprised that even someone from a rich family like Rea could have such problems. He told her it was normal for someone to go to a quiet place and scream as loudly as they could when forced to do things they hated in life. Rea then asked if Chihiro had come there to scream too. Chihiro explained everything and Rea was shocked to hear about the magic to bring someone back from the dead. She asked if that was even possible. Chihiro couldn't say for sure, but he thought maybe the magic could turn someone into a wandering zombie. He was only trying to help bring Babu back, but now he wasn't so sure. Shigeru really wanted to see Babu running around again like he used to. He even started to think he was just forcing his will onto Babu, who might not even want to come back. But Ri encouraged him, saying she believed that maybe Babu did want to be with Chihiro again. Rea even offered to help Chihiro. Shigeru asked her if she really wanted to get involved with something so strange. Rea explained that her father was obsessed with cleanliness, so they weren't allowed to have any pets at home. She really wanted to show love to animals. Chihiro didn't mind, and he also remembered that Rei said she'd do anything for him. He jokingly told Rei she could become a zombie, 
since she wanted to die and be reborn as someone else. But of course, Shihiro was just kidding. Rea's frightened expression made him laugh, just as he suspected, Rea was easily tricked. Shihiro then warned her to be careful around guys, saying that bad guys might trick her when she's not paying attention. Rei responded by saying she didn't have a boyfriend, so she'd be fine. Shihiro teased her, saying only innocent girls would be proud of something like that. Rei then asked if Shihiro had a girlfriend, to which he replied that he didn't. Rei pointed out that Shihiro had no right to tease her when he didn't have a girlfriend either. Shihiro told Rei that he wasn't into living girls, he was only interested in zombie girls, of course, Rei was shocked by that. Shigeru wasn't joking about this. Ever since he was a kid, he had been searching for a zombie girl, though it was obviously hard to find one. Rei stood up and asked Shihiro if he was ready to keep his word if she ever became a zombie. Shigeru was confused, but Rei smiled and told him to think about it before saying goodbye and heading home. Shigeru felt frustrated because he felt like she had outsmarted him. Rei suggested they meet again at the same place tomorrow. Shigeru had never imagined something like this before, imagining Rei becoming a zombie. Rei and Chihiro met again the next day at the same spot. Rei was engrossed in watching a zombie movie on Chihiro's laptop, while Chihiro was busy preparing a magical potion for today's experiment. Rei seemed really interested in the zombie film and asked Chihiro why the zombies were tearing into their friends and eating them. Chihiro explained that this was simply how zombies behave, they attack and eat humans. Rei was surprised because it seemed like she was only just learning what zombies are. She also told Shihiro that she had never watched a zombie movie before. Shihiro intentionally brought a terrifying movie filled with gruesome scenes, hoping to scare Rea on her first watch. But instead, Rea became even more fascinated by the creepy zombie movie. Shihiro reminded Rea that she was supposed to help him make the resurrection potion. Feeling bad for getting too absorbed in the movie, Rea quickly apologized, closed the laptop, and began helping Shihiro gather the ingredients for the potion. She asked what poisonous plants they would be using today. It seemed like Chihiro was running out of ideas and was becoming a bit doubtful about successfully creating a resurrection potion, especially since parts of the instructions in the book were unreadable. Rea asked what would happen to Babu, their pet cat, in the end. Chihiro simply replied that he might have to bury him, especially since this was the fifth day of trying to create the resurrection potion. Shihiro teased Rea by asking if she would eat Babu, and of course, Rea didn't understand why Shihiro would even think that. Shigeru clarified that it was just a joke. He mentioned that he had already tried using all the poisonous plants in the area from Morning Glory, Lily, Water Hemlock, to Chinese Plum. Shigeru then wondered what plant they should try next. Suddenly, Rea suggested they go outside to find more poisonous plants. She hurriedly left, but as she walked, she tripped over a bowling ball, causing her skirt to flip up. Shigeru saw this making Rei feel embarrassed, and she quickly left the building. Shigeru hadn't expected Rei to be such a bold person. Rei feels that her father's love for her has gone beyond the boundaries of what is normal for a family. When Rei was a toddler, the maids would play with dolls with her. One day, they asked her to grab a doll from them, but Rei, who wasn't yet good at walking, fell and started to cry. The maids comforted her, as most people would, but her father reacted differently. He was upset about the incident, and the next day, all the maids who had played with her were fired. As a child, she would often play ball with the maids in the yard. One day, while they were playing, a cute cat appeared. Naturally, her childlike instincts kicked in, and she went over to pet it. Her father, Senka Danikuru, watched the entire scene from behind a window. The next day, the cat was gone, and so was the maid who had been watching her. Rea was mostly left with her mother, Senka Area, who was distant and cold toward her. Every year on Rea's birthday, her father would take photos of her without any clothes on. As Rea grew older, she started to realize that what her father was doing was far from normal. Even Aria became a little suspicious of Danichiru's feelings toward Rea. It got to a point where Rea couldn't take it anymore. She often felt Danichiru's presence or the presence of one of his subordinates watching her. It was a gaze that followed her no matter where she went. At school, Rea made her first friend Nakadai who was a friendly girl. She comes from a respected family, so Danikaru allowed Rea to be friends with her. Before this, Rea always thought that everyone hides their suffering behind a smile. But after befriending Nakadai, she started to realize that her thinking was wrong. It was just that she hadn't been lucky in life. Rea often visited Nakadai's house and saw the warmth and affection in Nakadai's family. For the first time, Rea shared the things she had been going through with Nakadai, and Nakadai was shocked to hear it. Nakadai thought it was really strange for Danikuru to take photos of his daughter without clothes on. 
She also suggested that Rhea ask Danikuru to stop doing that. However, Rhea was still too afraid to anger her father. Makadai also mentioned that she had fought their father before and that fighting with one's dad was a normal part of family life. But after that conversation, Rei regretted sharing all her secrets with Makadai. Meanwhile, Chigiro had been waiting for Rei inside the building for a while and started feeling worried about her. He was afraid Rei might have gotten lost in the forest or even slipped and fallen into the river, although he wasn't sure if Rei would do something that dangerous. He looked out the window and was shocked to see Rei struggling to climb a steep hill. Shigeru rushed out to help her and arrived just as Rei was about to slip. Fortunately, Shigeru grabbed her hand firmly, pulling her back and preventing her from falling. He even teased Rei, calling her a lady who can't survive without a caretaker. Rei got annoyed at that and claimed she could climb the hill by herself. Shigeru then jokingly asked if she wanted him to let go of her hand, which of course she didn't. They returned to the abandoned building and Shigeru asked why Rei felt the need to climb the hill. Rei simply replied that she saw the plant she was looking for growing near the grave at the top, and she thought it would be faster to get there by climbing. Shigeru called her a reckless rich girl, but Rei didn't care. She said that even if she fell and died, Shigeru could just bring her back to life as a zombie. Shigeru was startled by this, especially since he hadn't even managed to revive Babu yet. He also pointed out that he had never said he would bring Rei back to life if she died. Rei made it clear, though, that she was begging Shihiro to revive her if that ever happened to her. Rei finally found the courage to ask Danikuru to stop his actions. She refused to be photographed without clothes. Danikuru then asked why she was rejecting this, claiming it was a normal thing for parents to document their child's physical growth. Rei shouted back, saying it was not normal and unlike other families. She wanted them to be a normal family. She wanted to live a normal life, just like everyone else. Danikuru then asked if someone had said something to her, but Rei denied it, though Danikuru kept pressing. Rei grew angrier and told him that anyone would find what he was doing strange. Danikuru simply responded that Rei didn't understand. The only thing that was truly real in this world was Danichiru's love for her. He then walked away, but Rei was left feeling deeply unsettled. Sure enough, the next day a friend told Rei that Nakadai was moving away, saying that something had happened to Nakadai's father, he had been forced to quit his job. Rei knew Danichiru was behind this, once again, he had interfered. Rei ran to see Nakadai, relieved she could still catch her before she moved. Nakadai was going to a cat shelter because her new home wouldn't allow pets. Nakadai's family had changed and she was angry with Raya for saying something to Danikuru. Nakadai felt that she had never interfered in Rei's life and now she regretted ever being friends with her. Nakadai left Rei standing there feeling devastated. Rei became more convinced that Danikuru had taken everything from her. Danikuru explained to Rei that happiness means something different to everyone. He believed that the purity of his love for her was something no one else could understand and he told her that one day she would realize how deep his love was, deeper than anyone else's. He also warned Rhea that if she didn't understand, someone else would suffer. Danikuru insisted that Rhea didn't realize how much better her life was compared to others. Then Danikuru demanded that Rhea take off her clothes so he could take her picture for her birthday this time. Rhea couldn't stop him this time. She realized that if her happiness came at the cost of someone else's suffering, she would rather live in sadness. Rei showed Shihiro the poisonous plant she had collected, it was a hydrangea. Shihiro asked why she had chosen a plant that grew all over town. Rei explained that many people didn't realize how dangerous it was. It was a symbol of her family and she had many in their garden. Even when she was little, her father had warned her never to put it in her mouth. Suddenly, Shihiro remembered that his forgetful grandfather used to eat hydrangea leaves all the time. Rei was surprised and wondered if the plant's effects vary depending on the person. They decided to try it out. Shigeru crushed the hydrangea leaves into his potion mixture and after adding all the ingredients, the potion was ready to test. Shigeru carefully took Babu's body out of the icebox and with care placed the mixture in Babu's mouth. Both Shigeru and Rei were hopeful that this time the experiment would work. But after waiting for a while, there were still no signs of life from Babu. They concluded that once again the experiment had failed. Shihiro and Rei began to pack up, getting ready to head home. Rei asked what other poisonous plants they might try tomorrow, but Shihiro refused. He felt sorry for Babu, saying he couldn't keep forcing things for his own selfish reasons. He decided it was time to bury Babu, and Rei agreed. Shihiro thanked Rei for helping him, and Rei nervously asked if they wouldn't meet again at this place, but quickly got embarrassed and said goodbye before heading off. Shigeru noticed that Rei was walking with a slight limp. 
Rhea mentioned that she had twisted her ankle when she slipped earlier, but said she was fine and continued walking. But Shihiro, worried, ran up to her and lifted her onto his back, much to her surprise as she shouted in shock. He then placed her on the back of his bike and asked her to hold the icebox with Babu's body inside. As they rode, Rhea's mind wandered, wondering why she had been born into a family so different from others. She longed for a normal life to laugh freely like everyone else. She wished she could be born again and find freedom. If that wasn't possible, then maybe it would be better to just die. Rhea asked Shihiro to stop the bike near a tunnel not far from her home. Shigeru, confused, asked if her house wasn't up the hill and offered to take her all the way to the front door. But Rei refused, explaining that she never used the front entrance. She planned to sneak in through a secret door hidden in the bushes, and fortunately, her father hadn't grown suspicious yet. Shigeru wondered how terrifying Rei's father must be. Before leaving, he reminded Rei not to be late for Babu's funeral tomorrow, and she agreed. Rei slipped through the hydrangea bushes, and Shihiro continued on his way. Little did they know, Ganikuru was watching them from afar through binoculars. When Rhea reached the back door of her house, Ganikuru called out to her and immediately slapped her across the face. Ranko was soaking in Shihiro's bathtub when she suddenly heard the sound of Shihiro's bike stopping outside. She greeted him from the bathroom window, catching Shihiro off guard. Shocked, Shigeru asked why Ranko was in his bathroom. Ranko casually responded that she was just returning his DVD. Annoyed, Chihiro questioned why Ranko was using his family's bathtub like it was her own, but Ranko reminded him that since they were cousins, it wasn't a big deal. Ranko then started interrogating Chihiro, asking where he had been this late at night. Chihiro made up an excuse, saying he went to the store to buy ice cream and took a short break by the river. Ranko found his explanation odd, especially since Mero had told her that Chihiro had been going out every night since Babu died, always carrying that ice cream storage box with him. Shikiro continued to defend himself, claiming that he was just playing with a raft at the river. Curious, Ranko approached the ice cream box and demanded to know what was really inside. Panicking, Shigeru begged her not to open it. Teasing him, Ranko asked if Shikiro's zombie obsession was starting to get the better of him, suggesting he might be doing something inappropriate with Bobby's body. Ignoring Shikiro's pleas, Ranko opened the lid of the box and suddenly, something jumped out. Shigeru was overjoyed. This meant his magic had worked and Babu was alive again. The event happened so quickly that Ranko didn't get a good look at what had come out of the box. Meanwhile, Rhea was feeling heartbroken because she wouldn't be able to see Chihiro for Babu's funeral tomorrow. Danichiru had forbidden her from leaving the house not even for school. Secretly, Rhea had taken a small portion of the magic potion she and Chihiro had made together. Even though it probably wouldn't bring her back to life, it still contained poison. Desperate, she drank the potion hoping it would kill her. Rhea had lost all hope in her life, feeling that it would be better to die than to continue living in such misery. Shihiro recalls the time he gave Rhea a ride home and throughout the journey, neither of them spoke a word. Rhea simply enjoyed the trip with Shihiro, as it was the first time she could go out with someone else. Before this, her father had always forbidden her from going out with her friends. Shihiro regrets that moment a little. He should have asked her what she was thinking or maybe about her hopes for the future. If he had done so, that might have been his last chance to help Rhea. Danichiru's rage became uncontrollable when he found out that Rhea had secretly left the house to meet Chihiro. When Rhea returned, he didn't hesitate to slap her multiple times. He strictly forbade her from leaving the house, even stopping her from going to school. Rhea couldn't stand Danichiru's oppressive behavior anymore, so she decided to drink the potion Chihiro had made to resurrect Babu. Rhea hoped the poison in the potion would kill her, but unfortunately, Things didn't go as she expected. She woke up the next morning and she was ready to head to school, still hoping her father would allow her to go. She went to the dining room to see her father and mother. Rhea greeted them and Danichiru welcomed her. Aria asked Rhea why she had broken her promise and snuck out of the house the previous night. Rhea apologized for what happened, saying that she had just wanted to take a walk in the forest to admire the beautiful moon. Aria, clearly upset, warned Rhea to be careful with her actions, also pointing out that every decision Rhea made could affect Aria's reputation as the school principal. Danikuru then warned Aria not to scold Rhea again. Aria left the dining room, ignoring Rhea. Danikuru apologized to Rhea for hitting her the night before. Rhea responded by saying it was all her fault and thanked Danikuru for everything he had done for her. Danikuru praised Rhea for being a good girl and understanding him. 
He assured Rhea that he was the only one capable of protecting her. Danikaru then asked why Rhea was still wearing her school uniform when he had clearly told her the night before that she was no longer allowed to go to school, instructing her to study at home. Rhea apologized again and agreed to comply. Suddenly, one of Danichiru's men arrived and asked Rhea to leave and change out of her uniform. She left the dining room and Danichiru's men closed the door, as it seemed they had something important to discuss. Rhea didn't go far but tried to listen to their conversation from behind the door. Her father's men had discovered the identity of the boy who had been with her the night before, they had learned that Shihiro attended Shiyu High School, and was the son of the head priest at Shiryu Temple. Danichiru ordered his men to castrate Shihiro as a warning, so that he would never approach Rea again. Rea was shocked to hear this, knowing that Shihiro was in great danger. Shigeru tried calling out to Babu, who was up in a tree. Ranko still couldn't believe why Shihiro made a magic potion to raise the dead and used it on Babu's corpse. She never imagined Shihiro would do such a thing, especially since he's the son of a chief priest. Mero wasn't surprised at all by her older brother's behavior. She had known for a long time that Shihiro was a weird guy who was obsessed with zombies. Still, she didn't expect him to go this far. Shihiro admitted that what he did might have been cruel, but thanks to it, Babu really did come back to life. Wouldn't everyone be happy if their family members came back? Ranko was happy Babu was alive again, but she still wasn't sure if it was truly Babu. Shigeru then pointed out that Babu's meow still sounded the same as before, as Babu was never able to make a normal cat sound when he was alive. But Ranko remained doubtful, especially since Babu now had white eyes and seemed more expressive than before. Shigeru and Ranko continued debating whether this was the real Babu. Ranko was even worried that Babu might attack people like the zombies in the movies and those bitten could turn into zombies themselves. Shigeru, however, was confident that Babu wouldn't behave like that. Suddenly, Babu started running really fast as if chasing something. Shigeru panicked and ran after him with Ranko following behind. Mero reminded her brother that he had left his bag behind, but Shihiro yelled back saying it looked like he would be skipping school today. Jagoro, hearing all the commotion, asked Mero what was happening. Mero told him that Shihiro had adopted another cat and managed to bring Babu back to life. Hearing that, Jagoro was overjoyed. Shihiro tried to grab hold of Babu, who was right in front of him, but he failed. He wasn't too surprised though, since Babu was usually easy to catch. Ranko asked if it was safe to touch Babu with bare hands. They kept following Babu as he ran along the fences of people's houses. Shiro told Ranko she should just head to school since she probably had sports practice. But Ranko said it was her duty as his older sister figure to keep an eye on him. Eventually, they reached a narrow, long drainage tunnel. Without hesitation, Shigeru went in to keep following Babu. Ranko couldn't believe he was actually doing this. Meanwhile, Rei was sneaking out of her house through the back door, passing through the hydrangea bushes. Aria clearly saw her leaving from the window but didn't care. Danikiru passed by and Aria offered him some wine, but he ignored her as usual. Aria knew Danikiru had long since stopped paying attention to her. The tunnel Babu went through was incredibly narrow and long, but Chihiro wasn't giving up. Ranko, reluctantly, followed behind him. Chihiro didn't even know how far the tunnel stretched. Ranko felt the tunnel's walls were scraping against her, and her body was getting stuck. She couldn't move at all. But Chihiro ignored her and kept going, leaving her behind. Ranko was frustrated that Chihiro was so focused on Babu and didn't show her the slightest bit of concern. No matter how loudly she shouted, Chihiro kept getting further and further away. Whether he heard her or not, Ranko was furious and called him an idiot. Finally, Chihiro reached the end of the tunnel, which opened up to a lake near a forest below Rei's house. It turned out Babu just wanted to get a drink of water before continuing on his way. Near the school's baseball field, Yasutaka and Mogi sat together, looking out at the garden. Yasutaka asked Moji if he liked baseball, and it turned out Moji only enjoyed watching it. Then Yasutaka asked if Moji liked girls, and Moji responded with a similar answer, saying he only liked looking at them. Yasutaka, curious, commented that this might be why Mogi hadn't made any progress and then playfully started tickling Mogi. He poked Mogi's chest, making him squirm with laughter. Yasutaka kept teasing him, asking if it felt good, while Mogi just laughed, trying to hold in his giggles. Yasutaka seemed to enjoy messing with Moji, but Mogi still didn't fully get what Yasutaka was trying to say. Yasutaka mentioned that from where they were sitting, they had a good view of the Senka High School students. Suddenly, Rei appeared, calling out to them from behind the fence, asking if they had seen Shihiro. 
Both Yasutaka and Mogi were shocked. Yasutaka, especially, was thrown off as he couldn't believe that Rea, the girl he had secretly admired, was actually talking to him. Rea repeated her question, asking for Furia Chihiro, the first year student. Moji then told her that Chihiro hadn't come to school yet. Yasutaka, still curious, wondered why Rea was looking for Chihiro. Rea, somewhat nervously, replied that Chihiro was about to be castrated, thanked them, and quickly left. Yasutaka was left in stunned silence, unable to process the fact that Chihiro, of all people, was somehow connected to Rea. Meanwhile, Rea was still searching for Chihiro, feeling anxious after her interaction with Yasutaka. She wondered if she had said something strange. As she continued walking through town, one of Danichiru's henchmen spotted her. The henchman immediately called Danichiru, informing him that Rea was in town. Danichiru instructed his henchman not to rush into capturing her, but to continue following her. Danikuru was frustrated, not understanding why his daughter was being so stubborn and refusing to listen to him. Rei kept walking until she reached a slope, still searching for Chihiro. At the same time, Chihiro was wandering near the cemetery, trying to find Babu, when he realized that Ranko wasn't with him. He grumbled to himself, wondering where Ranko was since she had said she would watch over him, but now she was nowhere to be found. The sky was getting cloudy, and it looked like it was about to rain. Suddenly, Chihiro spotted Babu in the bushes, eating hydrangea leaves, and was shocked. Shihiro then remembered that this was the same place where Rea had gotten the hydrangea flowers the night before. To his surprise, he then noticed Rea herself limping along the cliff above. Rea thought Shihiro was waiting for her at the old building, so she was heading there, hoping to meet him again. She felt incredibly guilty and didn't want Shihiro to get into trouble with Danichiru because of her. Suddenly, Danichiru called out to her, asking where she was going. Startled, Rea turned to see Danichiru and his henchmen standing behind her. Danichiru calmly suggested that while it was nice to go for a walk in the woods, this was getting a bit far. Shigeru watched the entire scene from below, confused about what was going on. Danichiru tried to coax Rea into coming back home, saying it wasn't too late to forgive her for her actions. He reminded her that she was his daughter, a bright and intelligent girl, and a member of the Sanka family. As he reached out to touch her, Rea firmly pushed him away, telling him no for the first time in her life. This bold move shocked Danichiru. Shigeru, still watching, couldn't understand what they were talking about. Danichiru, stunned by Rea's defiance, asked her to explain her behavior. Rea finally spoke up, telling him that while she knew she was his daughter, that didn't mean he owned her heart and body. All she wanted was a little freedom. Danichiru then asked her what kind of freedom she was looking for. Was it the freedom to leave home, or the freedom to love someone? Rei stood silent for a moment, but Danichiru forcefully grabbed her hand, trying to drag her back home. Babu, who had been watching the whole time, climbed up the slope and chased after them. Rei kept begging her father to let her go just for today, but Danichiru firmly refused, knowing that Rei only wanted to meet Chihiro. Babu approached them, and Danichiru, startled, called the cat filthy. He became frightened, knowing that he was allergic. As Babu got closer, Danichiru tried to shoo the cat away, terrified his allergy would flare up again. Rada couldn't believe what she was seeing. She shook free of Danichiru's grip and rushed over at Babu, unable to comprehend that the cat had somehow come back to life. Danichiru shouted at her not to touch the dirty animal, but Rea ignored him. She knelt beside Babu, asking if Chihiro had perfected the potion, or if perhaps the concoction he made last night really worked. Suddenly, Danichiru stepped forward and tried to whip Babu, but Rea quickly blocked the blow. The whip struck Rea instead, causing her to lose her balance and tumble down the slope. Danichiru panicked, unable to believe what had just happened. Just before she fell, Rea caught sight of Chihiro, but it was too late. Her body crashed onto a sharp rock and then tumbled into a patch of hydrangeas. Bloody, Rea died instantly. Danichiru stood frozen, utterly devastated by the sight of his daughter's lifeless body. As the rain began to pour down, soaking everything in its path, Shigeru rushed to Rea's side, overwhelmed with sorrow. He screamed, begging Rea to say something, desperate for her to still be alive. Shigeru muttered that Rea didn't need to die for real, that what he said earlier was just a joke. But now he realized Rea's request to be brought back to life had been more serious than he ever imagined. He broke down in tears, devastated that he couldn't save her. As he mourned, Babu approached Rea's body and began licking the blood from her hand. Just as Shihiro was about to walk away, he suddenly heard someone call his name. He froze, unable to believe his ears. It was Ra. Her lifeless body was rising, stumbling toward him, softly whispering his name. 
Chiguro stood in disbelief, unsure of what he was witnessing. He hadn't given her any resurrection potion. None of this made sense. Danichiro's men were equally stunned, unable to comprehend what had just happened to their master's daughter. They tried to calm him down, but even they couldn't explain what they were seeing. Reya slowly approached Chihiro, reminding him that he had promised to take responsibility for her. She then embraced him, her grip gentle but firm. Babu wagged his tail, clearly happy to see Rhea back on her feet once again. Danichiru saw Rhea in his dream covered in blood as she stood up again. He reached out to hold Rhea's hand but was shocked to find no pulse in her wrist. Desperately, Danichiru begged her not to leave him but Rhea refused. She told him that she was no longer his daughter because she was no longer human. Danichiru soaked in the bathtub, surrounded by pictures of Rhea, filled with regret over how things had come to this. The household staff gossiped about Ra, seemingly aware that the reason she often snuck out was to meet a young man. They also knew that Rhea had run away from home. Aria entered the room, interrupting their conversation, and the staff immediately greeted her. Aria asked what they meant by Rhea running away, and the staff told her that Danichiru had informed them of Rhea's departure when he got home. Aria then asked where Danichiru was, and the staff informed her that he had been in the bathroom since his return. Aria headed toward the bathroom, instructing the staff to attend to their other duties. As the staff resumed gossiping, they commented on how Aria smelled of alcohol and how Danikiru no longer paid her any attention, which had caused Aria many problems. Aria entered the bathroom and called for her husband. She asked what he meant by Rhea running away. Danikiru told her that Rhea had died, then came back to life, only to leave him again. Aria didn't understand what he was talking about, what mattered most to her was ensuring the news of Rhea running away didn't spread, as it could jeopardize her position as the head of the school. She asked if Danichiru knew where Rhea was now. One of Danichiru's men arrived, saying he suspected Rhea was with a high school boy named Furia Chihiro. Aria asked who Chihiro was and Danichiru believed that Chihiro had deceived Rhea and was responsible for everything. Enraged, Danichiru stood up from the bathtub, shouting that he would rescue Rhea and purify her heart and soul with his love. Senka High School and all-girls school had a unique routine. Every student had to sew for 10 minutes before class started. This activity wasn't just to sharpen their skills but also to help them calm their minds and they did this every day. Rhea had been sewing since she was a child, long before attending school which was why she was able to stitch up her own wound. Chihiro helped hold her stomach while she stitched it, making him a little nervous. Once finished, Rhea wrapped the wound with a bandage. Being a zombie made her laugh with delight since she no longer felt any pain. Shiro pulled her aside, asking if she didn't understand that she was dead. Her body was cold, her heart no longer beat, and her pupils were dilated. He was puzzled as to how Rhea could still laugh. Rhea cheerfully replied that this was the first time she had ever been in a boy's room, leaving Shihiro speechless. After gym class, Ranko changed out of her uniform. A friend invited Ranko to find something sweet on the way home suggesting they visit a nice cafe along the roadside. However, Renko declined, explaining she had other plans. She was still upset at Chihiro for leaving her in that small tunnel while chasing after Babu and vowed to get back at him. She accidentally mentioned that she would strangle him, which confused her friend. Renko brushed it off and quickly left. Rei was enjoying the evening view from Chihiro's bedroom window, the air feeling cool after the rain. Shigeru was confused, wondering if Rhea planned to stay the night in his room or even stay forever. He glanced at Rad, noticing her slightly open back, and then got nervous when she asked if he could see her. He quickly replied that he didn't see anything. It turned out Rhea was pointing out that Babu was sitting on a tree branch. Shigeru felt relieved as he had been worried about Babu. He called out to Babu, and when Babu turned, his black eyes had returned to normal ever since eating the hydrangea leaves. After hearing Babu's meow, Rhea mentioned that something seemed odd about Babu's nose, wondering if he was okay. But Chihiro reassured her, explaining that Babu had always been like that during his life. He had even been taken to the vet, but they said it couldn't be cured. His mail sounded like that, which is why he was called Babu. It seemed like Babu didn't understand how much Chihiro worried about him. Babu meowed again, and Rhea said that Babu was saying the tree felt really comfortable. Chihiro was shocked that Rhea could understand what Babu's meows meant. Rhea explained that she just had a feeling Babu was saying that. Shigeru started wondering if they had some special zombie language. To him, Rhea's personality hadn't changed at all since becoming a zombie. Rhea then asked if something was wrong and Shigeru said it was nothing. Rhea teased him, asking if she should act more like a zombie, and then began mimicking one. 
Chihiro stayed silent, honestly thinking Reya was already beautiful enough as she was. He asked her if she had any regrets about becoming a zombie. Reya said she didn't regret it at all because she believed Chihiro would take responsibility. Chihiro asked her what kind of responsibility she had in mind. Reya requested that he take her shopping, visit art galleries together, or watch zombie movies with her. She had so many other requests like going to amusement parks and other places. Rhea just wanted to experience the life of a normal girl, something she had never been able to do. Shigeru found it strange that although Rhea was a zombie, she wanted to live a normal girl's life. Rhea asked if that was weird or if Chihiro couldn't do those things with her. She grabbed Chihiro, causing him to feel a bit of pain. Rhea's strength was truly incredible this time. Rhea then tried to move her face closer to his, intending to kiss him. But her attempt was interrupted by Ranko's shout from outside Chihiro's house. Ranko yelled for Chihiro, telling him to come out. Shigeru looked out the window and saw Ranko, who was mad at him for leaving her earlier that morning. Ranko seemed to notice someone in Chihiro's room and asked if there was someone with him. Rea quickly hid again. Chihiro said he was alone in his room. Ranko was about to head up to his room, but Chihiro stopped her and asked to talk outside. Ranko questioned why she couldn't go to his room and Chihiro responded that he was busy with guy stuff. Ranko teased him asking if he thought she'd be shocked to find porn magazines in his room. Shigeru hurried downstairs and told Rea to stay where she was. Shikiro invited Ranko to the riverside to talk. Meanwhile, Rea was feeling embarrassed as she thought back to what she was about to do to Chihiro. Shigeru repeatedly apologized to Ranko, admitting that he had completely forgotten about her. But Ranko wasn't satisfied with his apology, so she angrily started choking him, tightening her grip as she grew more upset. Then Ranko asked about how Babu was doing. Shigeru reassured her that Babu was fine and hadn't attacked anyone. Ranko told Chihiro to get a phone so she could reach him. But Chihiro insisted he didn't need one. Ranko shifted the conversation back to Babu, asking what would happen to him in the future and whether Babu could stay the way he was now. Shigeru was still unsure, deep in thought. Suddenly, Yasutaka's voice called out to Chihiro. Yasutaka ran over and begged Chihiro to introduce him to Raya. He started worshipping Chihiro, wondering why Chihiro had never told him that he knew Rea. Ranko found Yasutaka's behavior disgusting and Moji commented to her that Yasutaka had been acting crazy lately. Ranko then asked if the Rea Yasutaka was talking about was Sanka Rea, to which Yasutaka confirmed. No wonder Chihiro had acted suspicious when asking about Rea before. However, Chihiro denied it, saying it was just a coincidence. Yasutaka got upset at the idea of it being just a coincidence since he had always struggled to approach girls. Moji, on the other hand, was relieved, thinking this meant that Chihiro wasn't only interested in zombies. But Chihiro immediately denied that, firmly stating that he was only attracted to zombie girls. He almost let slip that Rea wasn't human anymore. Rea had indeed become a zombie, just like the kind Chihiro had always dreamed about, and that zombie was currently in his room. He couldn't help but smile at the thought, which made Ranko suspicious of his odd grin. As evening fell, Rei started getting impatient, feeling like she'd been waiting for Chihiro for too long. She also wondered about the girl she had seen with Chihiro, noting that the girl was wearing a Senka High School uniform. Rei couldn't help but wonder if that girl was close to Chihiro. Feeling restless, Rei decided to leave the room assuming no one else was in the house. She undressed, thinking it was perfectly fine for a zombie to take a bath. Once under the shower, Rei noticed something strange, she couldn't feel the temperature of the water, whether it was hot or cold, but it still felt refreshing. It was her first time using such a small bathroom. She spotted a bath sponge she had never seen before. Its slightly firm but flexible texture made her mistake it for an exercise tool, so she squeezed it. As she was playing around with it, suddenly, Jaguru walked into the bathroom. He stared at Raya in shock and she quickly turned her back to him. Jaguru rushed toward her, hugging her and mistaking her for someone named Sada, asking if she had come back to life. Rhea pushed him away, explaining that she wasn't Sada, but Jaguru kept insisting it was her, admitting that everything had been his fault. Rhea corrected him again, telling him that he had the wrong person and pushing him off before heading back to Chihiro's room. Jaguru tried to chase after her, but Mero, who had just arrived home, blocked his path. Mero asked what was going on, and Jaguru exclaimed that Sada had come back to life and returned to him. Mero was confused, saying she wasn't sure if he meant alive or not, but she pointed out that their late grandmother's name wasn't Sada, it was Kyo. Jagara finally realized his mistake. 
Rei was still in shock from what had just happened, hoping Jaguro didn't actually see her. She started reminiscing about how, around this time of night, she would usually be sitting down to dinner with her father. But now, at the same hour, she was outside of her home and more than that, in a boy's room. Today had been an extremely long day for Rei, but she was happy to finally be free. She hoped things would continue like this moving forward. It was now evening and Shihiro returned home, grumbling about Yasutaka's behavior earlier. He wasn't sure how Yasutaka had managed to talk him into things as he was usually so stubborn, but it seemed he was really eager to meet Rea. Mero greeted Chihiro and offered him dinner since she had made stewed giblets. However, Chihiro said he wasn't hungry and immediately headed upstairs to his room. It seemed Mero hadn't yet noticed Rea's presence. Chihiro entered his room and apologized for making Rea wait so long, but he was instantly shocked to see her lying on the floor, completely naked. He asked why she was lying on the floor like that. Rei replied that she had just taken a bath. Chihiro, worried, warned her about catching a cold, but Rei assured him that she would be fine since, as a zombie, she couldn't get sick. Shiro felt relieved but then realized that this conversation was actually happening with a zombie he had dreamed about for so long. He almost got a nosebleed just thinking about it. He moved closer and asked if she wasn't worried about getting a stomach ache either, to which Rei replied that zombies don't get stomach aches either. Shiro was ecstatic especially when Rayo called his name in his soft, affectionate tone. He was overjoyed, feeling like all his dreams were coming true, nearly losing control of himself. Shihiro told Rayo to get dressed, but she revealed that she couldn't actually move her body. She felt like her body was stiffening more and more. Shihiro asked if that was why her speech had started to sound a bit slurred because her voice wasn't as clear as before. He wondered if the potion was wearing off. He grabbed Rei's hand and noticed that her pale skin was becoming even stiffer. Was this rigor mortis, a stiffening that occurs in a corpse? Shiro tried to reassure Rei, telling her that this was normal and nothing to worry about. Rei praised Shihiro for knowing so much, which made her so happy that Shihiro didn't even realize it. Even though she still had human consciousness, her body remained that of a corpse. This meant that if nothing was done, her body would eventually decompose, leaving only bones in a matter of a month. Shigeru couldn't just sit by and do nothing. He remembered Rei's wish for him to help her experience the normal life of a girl that she never had before. Shigeru gently lifted Rei onto the bed and covered her with a blanket. He needed to find a way to preserve her body as soon as possible, 